Hey guys, I'm Jukes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build an everyday hero. Uh, this video assumes that you have the Everyday Heroes core rulebook, and whether you played a t tabletop RTG before or you have not, uh, this video will have you covered. Of course, if you have played something like Dungeons and Dragons, this should seem very familiar to you, but if not, that's okay. We're going to cover everything you need to know. So the book mentions that there are several ways that you can build a character. You can start with concept first. So Everyday Heroes is releasing modules uh, currently, and what you'll see if you go to their website is that all of the modules are based on movies. So far the two that are released are The Crow and Escape from New York. Uh, so what you can gather from that is that when you're building your character, you can take an archetype from movie, TV, books, etc., and try to build your character around that concept. Uh, another way to build your character would be to read through every option there is and find the options you want to use and uh, build it backwards from there. And that option might be okay uh, if you're very familiar with all the rules of a system. But we're going to assume that maybe you're not and you don't want to read every single um, archetype in class just to get started. So what I'm going to do is try to make a character who's actually based off someone from a movie. So I decided to go with a version of Derek Zoolander. If you're not familiar with that, Derek Zoolander is a male model, not too bright, uh, gets involved in some espionage type business has to save the world. So I'm going to go ahead and name my character Merrick Foolander. So the next thing you see here is I have to choose my class and my archetype. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the classes and archetypes and see which one might fit Merrick. So to do that you can come to the archetype and classes table in chapter one. Um, now Merrick he may be strong, he may have some strength, uh, but that's not going to be his primary ability. Um, not agile, not tough, definitely not smart, not wise. So what I figured would be a best choice for him would be Charming uh, and Icon. The Icon conquers challenges by virtue of fame and personality. So we can see it lists here that the key ability scores would be Dexterity and Charisma, with the secondary being Constitution. So that's telling us right here that when we enter our ability scores, those are the three one we want to focus on, with the primaries being Dexterity and Charisma. So how do you get your ability scores? Well, that's going to vary table to table. Uh, you're going to want to talk to your GM about that. There are three main methods to getting your scores. You could roll for them. Uh, usually the, D the GM would say roll 4d6, drop the lowest, and that's your score. Uh, another way to do it would be point by, and another way to do it would be standard array or standard set. So if you want to get an idea of what point by looks like, uh, they have a table here, ability point costs. Uh, you can see if you want a high score like a 15, it costs you 9 points. Uh, and you, you would get 27 points to spend from this pool. Um, so the higher your score, the higher your ability modifier would be, uh, which means basically that you would add more to the roll. You would add, with a 15, you would add a plus 2 to your roll. Uh, the other way, other than rolling, would be standard set, which is what we're going to use today, where you assign scores to your abilities as you choose from the following set. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make Charisma our main stat with a 15. Dexterity will put the 14, and then Constitution will put the 13. Um, we're definitely gonna put the 8 in intelligence. Uh, we'll put the 10 in wisdom and the 12 in strength. And again we're just using uh, what was told to us 
about what is the best for this particular class uh, with charisma being high, dex being high, and then constitution being secondary. And then Derek Zoolander is not very intel intelligent, so we made that our dump stat. Uh, we still have strength and wisdom left over. So for the class we chose Icon, and for the archetype we chose Charming. Next thing we're going to look at is the background. So we can go to chapter 2 to start looking at backgrounds. There's a whole list here, I'm not going to go over all of them, I'm just going to go with the one that I picked for this particular character, and that is Cosmopolitan. Uh, the reason I picked this uh, for Merrick is because he is a male model. He's probably traveled all around the world, uh, maybe picked up some rudimentary languages, which is one of the features down here. Um, so what we're going to do, it says you gain an ability increase to your wisdom uh, by one. So our wisdom goes up to 11, which won't have any effect on our ability modifier. We choose an additional language, so we haven't chose languages yet. He's definitely going to know English. And then I think Swedish. And so he gets two languages and he gets to pick an additional language for their third language. And I'm going to pick Spanish. We see he has a skill proficiency in social sciences. So to mark proficiency, uh, you put a circle in the first dot. So social sciences, he is proficient. Background is cosmopolitan. He has a valuable piece of art from a foreign country, which we can add to our equipment, which is here on whether it be carried equipment or stored equipment, but you would copy it there. And then the special feature is common tongue, so you know a lot of basic uh, languages. You can speak rudimentary languages. So we'll put that right here. And on the next page is where we could put the information about it. On the next page we could put it more information about it, but the first page is just a shortcut for, you know, knowing what you have. Next thing we're going to do is pick our professions, so we go to chapter 3 for that. And again, I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm going to go through the one that I thought made most sense for this character, and that would be Independent. I envision him as sort of a freelance model, uh, does what he wants, not strictly tied to any company or anything like that. So sample careers would be dilettante, trust fund kid, a well-off pensioner, or retiree. So I think he fits uh, well with independent. So we see we get an ability score increase, increase your charisma, and one other ability score of your choice by one to a maximum of 20. So we see our charisma score becomes 16. I'm not going to boost his wisdom. Uh, basically the way these uh, modifiers work is for every 2 above 10 you get an additional point to your ability modifier. So a 10 is a plus 0, a 12 is a plus 1, a 14 is a plus 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my constitution a 14 with that additional point. And then coming back over here Skill proficiencies. Choose two skill proficiencies. So I can choose any two skill proficiencies, so let's come back here and do that. I think he's going to be proficient at persuasion. And you know what? Being a male model is tough. Um, you know, lots of time under the lights, lots of time making sure you're, you're, you've built up your body, so I'm going to make sure, so I'm going to mark him as proficient with endurance as well. Next, it tells us iconic equipment that we have, tasteful clothing, platinum engraved debit card, debit card, and a monogram scarf. So once again, you can copy and paste that under your equipment. It tells us his wealth level, which is four. And we know that we are starting at level one. And again, a special feature, pulling strings. Basically, you know how to wheedle favors from others. 
and we'll go ahead and copy that here and again we'll copy the detailed information about pulling strings to the next page okay so you see we're missing a lot of information here so now we have to go to our archetype of charming and see what information that gets us so we see we're under charming heroes now on chapter four and at level one uh, we get influence tricks and class talents we see our proficiency bonus is plus two we can go ahead and add that here we see our defense bonus is plus one but we don't have all that information yet we'll just write a plus one in here so we can come back to it and then our initiative bonus will be our dexterity modifier which is a plus two because it's a 14 so I'm gonna go ahead and fill these out strength is plus one Dexterity is plus two. Constitution is plus two. Intelligence is minus one, zero, and plus three. Coming back here, uh, we see we get two influence die, and that the type is d6, and we also get two tricks. So this will be different depending on your archetype. I believe Charming Heroes are the only ones with Influence Die, while other characters have uh, still have Focus and Genius. Uh, strength characters might not have either of these, I don't believe. But we see we do get two D6, two Influence Dies, and they are D6. So we'll mark that in there. We get two Tricks, which we'll get to. So let's go down to our Icon. We see we have saving throw proficiencies in dexterity and charisma. So we come here and we mark dexterity, proficient, and charisma, proficient. And what that means is when we roll these, we get to add our proficiency bonus. So we can start filling these out. This will be a plus one. This will be a plus four because we add two from our modifier and then our proficiency bonus and then if we want to move on to our passive perception it is basically our wisdom modifier which we have zero no wisdom modifier so now let's go back to our icon and we see our skills we can choose three from this list acrobatics athletics arts and crafts deception, intimidation, performance, persuasion, and streetwise. So, I know it wasn't Zoolander who built the school for ants, but whenever I think of that movie, I think of the uh, project that he destroyed, the school for ants. So, I'm going to give him proficiency in arts and crafts, just for fun. I'm going to give him intimidation and performance. Okay, equipment. Uh, he is proficient in basic equipment and advanced equipment, which we will get into. Uh, celebrity expertise. So this is where we get one expertise. Choose from arts and craft, performance, persuasion, and you must be proficient in the skill for to gain expertise. So we're going to go. We're going to take persuasion, and we're going to make that an expertise. And what an expertise means is you add your proficiency modifier twice. And finally, we see our equipment is the entertainment pack, and suggested weapons is either a pump shotgun or a hand cannon. I'm going to go ahead and pick the pump shotgun. So, scrolling down, we get our icon talents, two of which we get at level 1, which would be banter and center of attention. Which, once again, for the shortcut table, we can paste it here, and then we paste a longer description in on the next page. Icon tricks. We see we get two tricks to choose from at level one. And I'm not going to go through all of these. You can read through them as you wish. But I'm going to choose insult to injury. And watch this. This is where our influence die comes in. It will be different for different archetypes. But in this case, after you make an attack roll strength, Athletics check or dexterity, acrobatics check, but before determining the result, roll an influence die and add that to your result. Uh, 
So, and the same thing with insult to injury, I can add an in, in influence die there. And then again, you copy them here, and you copy the longer version on the next page. So, I forgot to mark that we are proficient in basic and advanced. And that is it. That's all we need to know so far. So, we're still missing some things though, right? We need to know our hit die and our hit points. So, I believe I just missed those. For Charming Heroes, your hit dice is 1d8 per hero level. So we start off with 1d8. And our starting hit points will be 8 plus our Constitution modifier. Our Constitution modifier is 2, so we get 10 hit points to start. And our defense is 10 plus our Charisma, or Dex, modifier, plus the Charming Hero defense bonus. So if we look back up here, our defense bonus is 1, so it will be 10, plus 1 is 11, plus our Charisma modifier will bring us to 14. So that is the plus 1 we added from looking at that chart. So this is, our total will be 14. So the last thing we need to know is speed, which we can come to our finishing touches. And unless our character has specific bonuses, which ours doesn't, your speed is 30. Now let's take a look at the equipment. Our character has the Entertainer Pack, which is price level 4. It comes with clothing. Again, we're going to copy and paste this into our, into our equipment. It has gear, bag stuff, pocket stuff, uh, a vehicle. I get a sports car, so that's kind of fun. Uh, or a common car for minus two price level. Car stuff, makeup kit, and disguise kit. So we're going to copy all that into our equipment. Um, we don't need to copy our vehicle or weapon into our equipment. We're just going to go ahead and copy that into... Uh, the spot on the first page that says what we have. We have a sports car. I could just write sports car here as a placeholder, uh, but I'm going to say it is a BMW Z4. It, we will find its property somewhere else. Uh, we don't have any armor. It says so right here. Armor none. But we do have pepper spray. Now that we know our equipment, we're going to go down and look at the basic equipment. Basic ranged weapon, pepper spray. So we see it does 1d10, or sorry, 1d4 poison damage. It's got a range of 10 feet. Nope, oh, we don't need to type that in there. We type in 1d4, and then there is a drop down below it to pick poison range is 10. The attack bonus is our dexterity modifier, which uh, I will show you where to find that later. Uh, the properties of it are blinding. So 10 feet, 10 rounds, properties blinding. So we put in 10 rounds. Properties blinding. Piercing value. PV stands for piercing value which essentially goes up a, against uh, the armor of a person. So, this has no piercing value. And then we would do the same thing with the pump shotgun, which is advanced armor, or advanced weapons, I believe. Nine rounds, three piercing value. And this one has a reload when it's emptied uh, after nine shots, it takes an action to reload it. You see that there is no reload for the pepper spray, so I would need to say to my GM, uh, can I go pick up more pepper spray at the store or whatever. Let's see what the properties are. Properties are loud, shot, and two-handed. Let's type that in so it's readable. And then we need to know what our attack bonuses and damage bonuses are. So we would find that back on our 
finishing touches page. So we can see weapon attack bonus for an attack roll. It will be a d20 plus the ability modifier plus a uh, proficiency bonus. So for a melee weapon, you would use strength. For a ranged weapon, you would use dexterity. And for a finesse weapon, you would use strength or dexterity. So coming back here, these are both ranged weapons, which I am proficient in. I do have proficiency in dexterity, so they would get a plus four, 2d6 plus four, and 1d4 plus four. And then lastly, we'll look at the car. So to do that, we come down to everything else. Scroll down until you find this table here. Now we have a sports car. Uh, PAX is passengers, two to four. Strength 4, Dexterity 4, Con 0. So we'll just fill that up here. Top speed for a sports car is 250 miles per hour. The properties are huge. And uh, I believe the AV was two. So the armor value, AV is armor value is two. Now there is another page further down where you can fill out all the info for your car and keep track of your car's information, whether it has blown tires, etc. Now there are more pages we could look at here as well. Um, obviously you can add an image, uh, put in your character's name, his weight, his or, her, his or her weight, skin, color, height, eyes, etc., marital status, pronouns, uh, motivations, attachments, beliefs, all that stuff, all the stuff you'd normally find. And this is where you really build out your character's personality, you know, what are their quirks, what are their virtues, flaws, and, uh, a, little, and a place to put a bi biography. Coming down further, talk to your GM before you go too far into the um, your locations uh, because for example in the in the crow module that's been released it is encouraged to have the players come from all over the world and then they're gonna end up in one place so there's really no need for them at least before the game starts to create their locations their homes their you know their labs whatever what have you so make sure you talk to your GM about that but I think that is going to do it. I think we covered everything. I hope you find this helpful. And if you did, click that like button. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.